Hello. I'd like to address the question of what is the future of agricultural and farming these days? What do we see happening in the next 20 or 30 years in agriculture? You know, um, in many ways, it would seem that agriculture and farming would be kind of the last place that would be revolutionized by technology. But in fact, it's happening very, very quickly. Farmers have always adopted new technologies and automation. In fact, the reason why we are so fat and happy today is because automation has made farming far, far easier and more productive than at any time in the past. And that will continue. So, so this is sort of an extension of things that are happening already, which is this automation. The primary place where this automation is going to be happening is in robots. So it's very obvious that we want to have robots doing the farming. We want to have machines farm. We want machines to weed. We want machines to um, do all the hard, dirty work that no human really wants to do, particularly on the scale that we are having to grow food now. And uh, automation has uh, accomplished much of, of, of doing away with the hard work, but there's still a lot of very complicated things that we've relied on humans to do, like harvest, pick things, pick this fruit, not that fruit. Um, very, very highly discerning actions that we haven't been able to automate so far. But now, with the advent of AI, we're now being able to put those into these machines that have electric power. And for the first time, they can do many, many things that only humans could have done in the past. Um, a new machine that I've seen um, the prototype of is, is a machine that's solar powered. It's being powered by the sun. It goes down a row and it has arms and it has eye and a brain and it's looking at plants individually and it's picking out, it's, it's removing the weeds because it knows a lettuce plant, a cabbage plant from a weed. And so it's actually doing weeding at better than a human could do. And because it's just being solar powered, these kind of just wander around the farm, um, running off of the sun, um, doing all the weeding. They are maybe uh, a pain to program right now because they're just the first prototypes. But they will become easier, easier to use and more adaptable to many different plants and uh, will become a common thing in the future as common as tractors. And we have a very similar kind of machine that can do precision agriculture. Again, it's, it's, it's dealing with each individual plant on a one-by-one -one basis. And we can have a machine, a robot, go down the row and it can actually remember each individual plant plant by plant, and remember where it was and what it got, how much fertilizer it got and how much it needs right now. And it will give just the right amount of water or uh, fertilizer, minimizing the use of it, not wasting any of it. And that kind of precision is something that a human farmer would really like to be able to do, but just could never hold in their head. And so um, that kind of precision is a kind of efficiency. So we're making agriculture much more precise and efficient. And that's a great job for robots because it decreases the amount of with the wastage. It decreases uh, the amount of materials that we use. And um, that kind of, um, we can extend that same kind of, of progress to milking cows which you can have robots milk cows. You can have them um, herding cows, and herding sheep. There's almost nothing that we can't really kind of imagine an AI robot uh, being able to accomplish in even the next 20 or 30 years. Um, so that's one thing, this is kind of ongoing automation, particularly using AI. The second, the second um, advent, the second frontier that we're seeing with um, agriculture is in new kinds of plants, new kinds of organisms. 
So we have things like, which I've talked about in another video on the future of meat, where we have deathless meat, where we can actually make food, meat food, without using living animals. We can use animal cells and we grow them in vats. So there's farming, which we foresee as use of the land, but there are other ways, that, and solar solar powered land, but there, there we can also solar power other organisms that may not be on the land. Maybe they're in a vat, maybe they're in a greenhouse. And so this idea of like soil, soilless agriculture, where you're using the sun for solar, but they're not in soil, they're in another medium. And maybe they're not even um, multi-cell animals, maybe they're single cell animals, like bacterium. So that's another frontier where we have soilless crops and we have much more control over what we can do and we can um, create um, them with efficiency that we may not have with the land. We can also, and are already will do, is to engineer crops, engineer plants or animals for very specific things. Many times um, that might be to increase their nutrient. A very famous case is golden rice, which can add vitamins to rice in a natural way, offsetting the, the vitamin deficiency of hundreds of millions of children around the world. For various political reasons, that has been blocked, that uh, golden rice has been blocked and not taken up, but it works. It can be taken up. Maybe it will be taken up, but that's an example of the, of the kinds of things that we can do with genetically modified organisms to actually increase the nutrition or we can increase their taste, or we can increase how easily it is to harvest them. In fact, we will probably use and or probably use engineering to create species that are more easily harvested by machine, which is already what happened. So the, we've been doing that, but we can do that even more. So we're going to actually work and create organisms, plants or animals that can actually be harvested by AI robots. Okay, so in other words, they, they, they will be more sympathetic, more in, in, in symbiosis with the machines. It, it's easier for the machines to grow these because they've been engineered to be grown by robots. But um, despite all the high-tech stuff, there will still be an organic movement. There will still be people who, who want food that is not GMO, who want food that has not been artificially um, infused with pesticides or other chemicals. And to do that at scale will require more and more automation and robots. It, while there still will be small boutique family kind of farms that maybe go from farm to table, they're very, very specialized. I think we'll see more of them that will be an option that will continue to grow. There will also be organic farmers that will be using robots and AI and precision agriculture to do their version organically. There's nothing that prohibits um, an organic farm from using AI robots because it really is not affecting, in fact, it's actually a good replacement for the chemicals they might use. So I think what we're gonna see in the future is a continuation of the different varieties, the different approaches that we have, fully automated, fully AI with chemicals, GMOs and chemicals and automation, automation without chemicals, automation without GMOs, GMOs without chemicals. All the different varieties are going to be um, available to anybody who has a particular preference. So again, what we get out of technology is more and more choices. If you would like to have food grown by the Amish and by hand and are willing to pay the higher price that that is, will cost, that will be an option for you. You can go visit the farm and pick the strawberries yourselves. Or if you want to have strawberries in the middle of winter, um, they may have been picked by robots somewhere in a land far away. Um, that all will be an option for you as well. And in fact, a lot of consumers will have both options. Uh, one day, they're going to get the robot-grown strawberries, and the next day, they're going to buy the Amish hand-grown strawberries. 
that's perfectly ordinary and to be expected. And so um, I think what we're going to see with agriculture is a, a, a explosion of different choices, including, you know, many new kinds of crops that we haven't seen before, crops that are kind of on a peripheral of domestication that we can actually use genetically modified to be domesticated, easier to grow. Mushrooms have been undergoing that recently. It used to be that mushrooms were very hard to grow. You can only find them in the wild. Maybe there was a couple of species that could be domesticated, and those were the typical mushrooms you see. Now we can have all kinds of mushrooms because we've been learning how to domesticate those wild mushrooms and actually make them grow on a farm. And now we have far more variety of mushrooms, and that is something, again, we can increase by modifying some of these so that they can actually live in a domesticated environment. And so um, uh, that's what I think the picture of the future of agriculture is, is going to be this cornucopia of many different possible foods than we've ever had before in many different approaches from organic, non-organic, GMO to the personalized version of food just for your genes. So the world of possibilities is what the future of agriculture looks like.